This presentation deals with the design of stabilizing piles, what we also call shear pins in slope stability, through geomechanical numerical modeling. In the first part of the presentation, I like to go over the two main methods used in numerical modeling for analyzing slope stability problems. The most common technique implemented in finite element and finite difference programs is the strength reduction method. In this method, the soil is assumed to behave elastically until the more Coulomb failure criteria is reached. The more Coulomb failure criteria is defined by the mobilized cohesion, C sub D, and the mobilized friction angle, phi sub D. These are the strength of the soil, for example, the cohesion, divided by a reduction factor, which is in the equations identified as R. R is increased until the program or the numerical method cannot find a solution with an ever-increasing R. And therefore, when the maximum value of R is reached, the slope fails naturally. This maximum value of R is the factor of safety of the slope. This video shows the implementation of the strength reduction method and it involves a pile with a plastic moment of one mega newton meter per meter. As the strength of the soil is reduced, the maximum bending moment is reached, a plastic hinge develops in the pile, and the contours which show the shear strains in the soil shows that failure starts to occur through the stabilizing pile. As the strength of the soil is being reduced, divided by this reduction factor R, the displacements on the slope increase. And at the beginning, they increase by a small amount. But as you see here, once we reach about 1.68, the displacements become very quickly very large. They increase asymptotically. And this maximum reduction factor, in this case, about 1.68, is the factor of safety of the slope, because you cannot reduce the strength by more than 1.68. This video is similar to the previous one. The pile has been moved slightly down slope, and the plastic moment has been slightly increased to 5 mega newtons meter per meter. As we reduce the strength of the soil, the bending moment in the pile increases. But in this particular case, the pile is able to resist the maximum moment caused by the soil. And we have a failure that occurs in this case above the stabilizing pile. This shows the evolution of the maximum bending moment in the pile versus the maximum slope displacement for the video that we've just seen. It shows that the maximum moment in this pile would be approximately 3,700 kilonewton per meter or 3.7 meganewton meter per meter. This is the maximum reasonable design load to which the slope should be designed. Therefore, if the plastic moment of that pile was 5 mega newton meter per meter, this would be a waste, as prior to reaching that load, the slope will fail first. 
One of the main advantages of using the strength reduction method involves the clarity by which you can see the critical mode of failure. Another advantage is that it eliminates the guessing that is typically involved in conventional slope stability where you have to make a hypothesis about what the critical mode of failure likely is. Another popular technique for analyzing numerically the stability of the slope involves kinematic plasticity and the method of characteristics. Here you see the critical mode of failure of a slope that is being modeled by this method. In this method, you can include piles. If the piles are weak, you will predict a plastic hinge and the failure will involve the pile. And you can include tiebacks too in combination with drill shafts. In this particular case, we have a relatively weak drill shaft and a relatively weak tieback. The drill shaft develops a plastic hinge and the tieback is yielding or being pulled. In the second part of this presentation, I'd like to show you the application of numerical modeling to a specific case history. The case history that we will use will be the Estrondo landslide stabilization in Encino, California. Approximately 50 years ago, a canyon was filled, creating a slope approximately 100 feet in height. Water would accumulate in this fill and cause repeatedly the failure of the slope. In 1998, the failure involved roughly the lower two-thirds of the slope, endangering the home at the base. The main design concern was a catastrophic enlargement of the failure which would involve the homes at the top of the slope. The repaired involve one, a line of solder piles at the toe of the slope, two, a line of stabilizing piles in the middle of the slope. These piles had in three, two lines of tiebacks. A drainage curtain, which is identified as number four here, to ensure that the canyon would be drained. And uh, I've drawn uh, the ground pressure contours that we assume in the uh, design using flak. Five was the removal of the landslide, uh, which is identified by a yellow line and construction of a compacted field buttress between the two lines of stabilizing piles. The soldier pile at the bottom of the slope was also used as a temporary protection to make sure that if during construction a mud flow would take place, it would not affect the home that existed at the toe of the slope. The mid-slope stabilizing piles were approximately four and a half feet in diameter and reinforced with steel eye beams that were welded at the site. The longest steel eye beam was approximately 100 feet in length. Tie bags were installed here you see the upper line of tiebacks. Then the drainage gallery was built at the top. 
the drainage gallery was built by building or drilling the equivalent of bell drill shafts one next to the other and instead of filling them with concrete they were filled in with gravel and this allowed drainage to a solid pipe that was brought in through uh, drilling, directional drilling, to hit the bottom of the caisson. After the first line of tie bags was placed, the landslide was excavated, and once uh, the elevation of the second row of tie bags was reached, the second of tie, line of tie bags was built. This shows the final repair after all the grading and construction of the drainage swells was completed. As geotechnical engineers, we have to identify what is the critical failure mechanism. In conventional slope stability, we often use circles that start at the top of the slope and go below the two lines of drill shafts or that start somewhere in the middle of the slope and either go below the drill shaft or sometimes uh, through the drill shaft if we are trying to calculate what is known as the unbalanced force. This approach involves guessing and the critical failure mechanism that is obtained is highly dependent on the guess made by the design geotechnical engineer. One of the advantages of numerical modeling is that this guessing can be removed. We see here that by using kinematic plasticity through the method of characteristics, we predict a plastic hinge that develops in the lower line of drill shafts, two plastic hinges that develop through the mid-slope drill shafts, and that there is also yielding of the tiebacks. The failure through the soil is roughly bilinear. Here we are applying the strength reduction method to the Estrondo landslide stabilization. At the beginning, you will notice the change in bending moments in the piles, showing blue, as well as the concentration of shear strains in the ground. This video also shows the maximum force in each of the tiebacks. As in the previous mechanism, we're seeing a bilinear type of failure. The critical mode of failure is better seen in this slide where dots have been placed at the location of the maximum bending moment where the plastic hinges develop and also the displacements of the piles are schematically shown with white lines. The arrows in blue show the critical failure mechanism of the ground which is roughly bilinear. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. On behalf of everyone at Group Delta, I want to thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.